CataractCoach.com. Resident case number 15 versus case number 180. Good progress has been made by this resident, but there are a couple of issues. Let's go into it. Here's case 15. Now, we sped the video up to four times normal speed, just so we can get through to here. So there's one pair of these, there's another. I do like the draping. I like the eye positioning. Eyes in primary. Look at the three lights in the middle there. The lights from the microscope are nice in the center of the cornea. There's a tripan blue dye. Good injection of viscoelastic. This is fantastic for case 15. Let's see the incision here. A little bit too much in the clear cornea for me. I'd rather have that incision hitting the limbal vessels just barely. But it's okay. It's not a bad incision. And now going with the forceps. Hey, if you're just doing a forceps to poke in the capsule, that's fantastic. And you've got forceps like mine that are marked off at two and a half and five millimeters. That rexus looks a little small there. So it's a little bit of a baby rexus. Remember, cataract coach always tells you, no baby rexus. That's a baby rexus. So for case 15, it's understandable. You see the left side of that rexus is too small. But nice and easy with the gentle hydro dissection here. And let's see if it spins. Remember, if it does not spin, you will not win. Let's see the spinning. Do we spin it yet? A little bit. There we go. Okay, a little bit of a spin. But see how small that erectus is and it's a little bit off center? It's going to make surgery a lot tougher. So when you're a beginning surgeon, if you're a resident, a baby erectus is your enemy. It makes the surgery so much harder. So let's see what the technique's going to be here. Again, we've sped the video up. This is, we've got to get through it, okay? So groove down the middle, maybe a stop and chop, maybe divide and conquer. And let's see, there's a, that's a reasonable groove. That's pretty good for case 15, actually. That's really good for case 15. Not sure if that prop get it all the way through. Taking the bubble out, okay. And now groove, so divide and conquer. Uh, that looks pretty reasonable. Can you get a quadrant out already? And this is fantastic. The surgical skill here for case 15 is great. I like how the eye stays in primary here. That looks great. My only criticism so far is the incision's not, the main incision's not so hot. And then that Rex is really small, which makes life a lot more challenging. So now here, are you gonna, what are you going to do here? Grab this and chop it? That would be fantastic. Or, oh, no, groove. Okay, groove. And So divide and conquer here. And let's see, bringing the piece up. That's a chop lit. Well, case 15, I don't know. Is that, what do you think? This is fantastic. If you are doing this chop of case 15, that is fantastic. And I can't wait to see your case 180. You're going to be amazed, right? Let's see. So taking out that last bit of nucleus, that looks great. Using a sharp chopper at case 15, that's, whoa, whoa, whoa. You got to hold there in the epinuclear shell. Careful, that can go right through to the posterior capsule. So, okay, maybe that's a case 15 kind of mistake. By manual IA, good use of both hands here. And let's see how the second hand works if you switch hands. So now the aspirator's in, looks like in the right hand. Infusion's in the left hand. So taking that out pretty nicely, very easy here. And let's see, this looks like a pretty clean cup. And the rexus looks intact. Sometimes with that baby rexus, you're inclined to... You know, you end up breaking it. So switching hands here, let's see how the left hand works. Now here's the infusion on the right, aspirator on the left. This is fantastic. You've got great hand-eye coordination, great dexterity. Honestly, I'm amazed at case 15. So only my only criticism so far is the main incision is not the best. It's kind of short. It's too much in the clear cornea. And then the rex is, oh, there's the split of the rex. I told you. With the rex is being small like that, you risk the capsule's edge, they're splitting, and you did. Don't put too much viscoelastic, because you can get that rip extending zip all the way to the posterior capsule, then you will be so sad if it rips the capsule open. So now, when you get the lens in, you better be very gentle here. So you've already got extension of the anterior capsule rim. Nice and easy. Inject, 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 inject. Let's see. Is the lens stuck in the incision a little bit? Oh, my goodness. What is going on? Okay, you got the lens stuck in the incision. So maybe that is case 15. Okay. So that's a little bit of a simple mistake. We can fix that. So slightly enlarge the incision. You don't have to have such a tight incision. You're better off having a normal size incision and not having so much pressure to shove the lens in. Now, let's see. Ooh, I'm worried about that anterior capsule, though. So now here comes the lens. Looks like reloaded. Nice and easy. That's much better. Now get the lens to open up in the bag without too much manipulation. Don't manipulate it too much because you can get that rip of the anterior capsule. It extends zoop, all the way to the posterior capsule. Then you'll be so sad. All right, here comes viscoelastic removal by manual IA. Nice and easy. In this case, for case 15, I would not go behind the posterior uh, surface of the optic. I would not take it. Don't worry about it. Patient can be fine. Take out the viscoelastic from the anterior chamber. 
And again, don't manipulate so much. Just get out of there. Seal up the incision here. That's, we don't like to seal that way. We like to do the roof of the incision. Remember, the roof, the roof. You didn't seal the center of the incision. You only did the two sides of the incision. Eh. All right. Now, let's watch the other case. But remember, if you're a resident, there's so much to learn on catacoach.com. You better download that free book. And there's a full curriculum series. If you are a resident, there is no excuse. You have to learn all this stuff. It's all free. Come on. Now, all right, same resin, case 180. Again, pretty good draping. Here comes a para, another para. This is four times normal speed again. And now let's see. Viscoglass is going in. That all looks pretty good. No need for tripan blue dye in this case. Let's see the incision. And that's a little bit better incision. I like that one better. Barely nicking the limbal vessel, so that improved. Let's see the rexus here. Going with the forceps and grabbing the capsule. A little bit better. Still kind of a baby rexus. You're still making a baby rexus. You got to avoid the baby rexus here. There's no upside in that. Now, the only time I'd recommend making a little bit smaller rexus is if you're worried about some issue in the post op period. Let's say you're going to do combined fake vitrectomy. You're going to put a gas bulb in the vitreous cavity. Well, you don't want the eye wall to pop out of the back. Okay, then do a four and a half millimeter rexus. Or you're going to do a combined with a almond valve. Or you can do a trabeculectomy, phaco trab. Well, then, okay, you may shallow the AC in the post op period. You don't want the eye wall to pop out of the back. Okay. Now, let's see. What are, what are we doing here? Readjusting, okay. Get, okay, get, getting a readjustment. If you need to, you do it. I, I, I can appreciate that. I'm not going to say anything about the lashes. It's good enough. Now, let's go and see the technique here. Let's see what's improved since case 15. So, okay, groove down the middle and cracking it. There you go. So, more efficient, obviously. And cracking it again. You got two halves and now rotating it. But look how the eye is not in primary now. On case 15, the eye was in primary. Look, where are the three dots of the microscope light? They're like at the superior limbus because the eye is not a primary. Raise the patient's chin right here. This is where you need to raise the patient's chin. You want the iris to be parallel to the floor of the operating room. That's the key here. In this case, it is not. The patient's chin is tucked. If the patient's chin is tucked, then during surgery, you're going to be not so happy. <laughs> and so... In a case like this, really, you got to position the head. This patient needs to lift the chin up. Lift that chin up. So there's still a, big, a nuclear piece there. You can flush it out of the eye, maybe. There we go. And then now cleaning this up. So there's certainly some improvement here. I liked that in this case, I like that the incision was better. The rex is still kind of not ideal for me. For case 180, the rex should be better. And the technique of divide and conquer or stop and chop was very good. This cortex move was very good. It's just that now... Oh, look, we got chemosis, chemos, a lot of chemosis here. So maybe one of those incisions was hitting a little too much of the conjunctiva. There's a delicate balance to get that incision right, where you barely nick the limbal vessels in the cornea, but you don't cut the conjunctiva, because now you've got this big chemosis everywhere, and the conjunctiva is all ballooned up. So now, trying to get that last nuclear chip out, you can actually just mush it down the IA probe, and now cleaning out the rest of the cortex, okay. So this is a reasonable case. It's not bad for 180, but I think we need to improve more. So I, my, your, my number one tip for you is you got to fix that rexus. You can't keep doing this baby rexus that's not so well-centered. you got to do a better job of the rexus. And then figure out the balance of the incision. Where should you place it to get a little bit of nick, uh, nicking of the limbal vessels without getting chemosis? Actually, you know, the rexus isn't bad. Let me take that back. It's not terrible. It's better than the case 15. And then my only issue is see, look where the lights are. Where are the microscope lights? Not in the center of the cornea. That's because the patient's chin is down. You need to lift the patient's chin. Tell the patient right here, lift your chin. Levante la quijada, por favor. Y mantenga los dos ojos abiertos. Lift your chin up and keep both eyes open. And so, here we go. Injecting that lens in the capsule bag. That looks pretty good. Get it dialed into position. Now we can judge the rexus size. Yeah, I know it's a pretty good rexus. I'll take it back. Case 15 had two small rexes, and that's why it ripped. Case 180, that's a pretty good rexus. I'd like mine still to be a little bigger, but with a 6 millimeter object, that's probably a 5-ish millimeter capsule rex. That's not bad at all. You've got great hands here. You know how to use your hands really well together. So, hey, great job. You've made a lot of progress. Again, fix the incision. Make sure the rex is good. And then in this case, 180, you got to get that head position right. Lift the chin up. You want the iris always, always parallel to the floor of the operating room. You'll thank me later. Again, remember, check out our podcast, everywhere you find podcast service. And remember, if you're a resident, there's so much free material for you. There's a free PDF book about cataract surgery. There's a free curriculum series. Just go to cataractcoach.com, the website. Yes, you have to leave YouTube. And you can download it all for free.